Thank you. Thank you. So welcome to the latest version of the uh, Feet to the Fire podcast. We're here at Zove's mm -hmm. in uh, Tustin mm -hmm. uh, uh, with uh, Rick Reef, Barbara Venezia, our uh, board member as well, uh, to talk about the upcoming March 3rd primary. Mm -hmm. uh, Barbara, tell me a little bit about um, what you're starting to see out there, how you're uh, gearing up for this year's election. Well, I think it's really interesting. You know, I've always said as, as a journalist now retired that uh, local politics is the form of government that affects you the most. If you stand outside your local supermarket and ask everybody you meet, Who's your city councilman? Who's your mayor? I bet you nine out of 10 people can't tell you that. And these people who start in your local government and then come up the ranks. So if you got a knucklehead on the bottom, they become a knucklehead on top. And so I think it's very interesting to see how Orange County is dealing with the uh, with uh, election season. Everybody's right. getting a mail-in ballot, right. which I thought was very interesting. Right. And I have some mixed feelings about that. Um. What's your sense? Uh, well, I'd like to know why Barbara has mixed say. feelings. Well, Barbara. okay. So in the old days, you had, uh, in the old days, you had a polling place in your neighborhood where you'd walk to it, you'd meet your neighbors, you'd discuss the local politics, and it was kind of a meeting ground. Now it's very impersonal. You just mail something in. And I don't know about you, but there's no mailboxes in my neighborhood anymore. So to mail a letter is kind of a hassle. But you know, now that not just the mail and and this, what I like is now it's free. I used to have to put a stamp on the mail in ballot. <laughs> now, now it's free. free. California is right. wonderful. Everything's free. So now, you know, you, you know, so, so I'm sure there are some people who didn't vote because of the onerous cost of a 40 cent stamp. So uh -huh. I, I, California is such a compassionate state. Nobody has to put a stamp on the, uh, on the belt, on the envelope. So that's great. But uh, no, there's, there's, they're kind of bringing back that, not just going to the polling place on election day, you can go a week in advance. No They've kidding. already started. I the, like that you know, week in advance yes, thing. And so now, you know, what is it? A week or 10 days, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you can go. And I mean, that's community. You can go in any time, sure, you sure. know. Uh, yeah. Well, you do Up ballot rivers, harvesting you know. now. You can go visit people, talk to them, and actually get a ballot and take it, take it back. And I am predicting. Do you think it increases provisional ballots? You know, I wonder if it might reduce actually provisional ballots because now you have such a long period for voting that you may have less of the last minute show up. I'm not registered. Do you I think, think the parties will still find those people that didn't bother putting the free envelope in the mail that didn't go to the polling places. And I do predict uh, just this is my editor instinct that in at some point, whether it's in a year or in five years, there's going to be uh, stories about the scandals of, of, of uh, harvesting, of, of ballot harvesting. That sure, there, it sure. is so It is so ripe for corruption and for, for cheating. I just think it's, it's inevitable that that's, that's going to happen. You guys ever think at some point we'll just go back to paper ballots, just back to just the simplistic go in and little punch hole and well, something? Well, you know, sometimes low technology is really the right technology. Uh, we've made things so complicated and we're so, uh, so we're so dependent on technology now. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but my handwriting has really gone to hell in a handbasket. I can type great. I can type six well, words print, a minute. You're supposed to print the name, but Barbara. You don't write the name. You I print write it. my signature and it's because I don't write a lot anymore. You know, I'm always typing. All right. Interesting. Now, what, um, okay, so we're talking about local races, and you're right in the thick of it with Voice of OC. What races do you, what are the top three races that you think are going to be really interesting this year? So I think uh, the Tyler Depp, uh, uh, Janet Wynn race, to me, is the most fascinating one. Uh, we're starting to see uh, Tyler Depp has been targeted because he's a moderate Republican, has been voting with the unions. Uh, many of the, the, in fact, the GOP rescinded his endorsement, something I've never uh, seen before, other than I think maybe Bill Bro in the 73rd district for a different set of reasons has had issues with the endorsement. But what I wonder if it's just, it's, it, it's going backwards where, you know, in Orange County for a while, they called it the Ba doctrine, where it was, if you took any money from public employee unions, you were persona non grata That's as a GOP. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think that people like Tyler Depp is, are looking at their voter registration areas. And as these areas get much more competitive, I wonder if it's just more complicated for a moderate Republican that's trying to stay relevant and be 
in the in the, the the modern debate here in California to say I can't walk around and be like you are a non person, you are a non person. I don't want to take this money. I don't want to take that money. I think Tyler's part of that new era of younger candidates that are saying I'll take the support where I can and. Frankly, dealing with public employee unions in part in California is part of the future. I, I think I think Tyler is just an old fashioned politician. You tell people you're one thing and you vote another way. <laughs> and that's why we have Donald Trump as president. OK, because <laughs> people are fed up with that. Tyler's a Republican. Right. All right. If you're going to be a Republican, vote like a Republican. OK. And he hasn't done that. One benefit the Republicans have right now is they can go to take them out because it doesn't mean anything. So it's kind of like, why not stand up for your principles because you're going to lose anyway. So, you know, you might as well take a stand. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I can remember, it wasn't that long ago that Janet Wynn was under being criticized because she was taking money from, from unions mm -hmm. and, and that funny, went right? against the pledge that she was supposed to sign the, the ball pledge and everything. So now this is what the Republican party in California has come to where it's like, well, do you, you know, we don't want the person who always sleeps with the Democrats. So we'll take the one who only sometimes sleeps with the Democrats, right, you know, right, and that's, right, that's basically yeah, but part of they the are. problem as I saw in the last election cycle, and I'm not sure how it will impact this election cycle is that the orange County Republican party, I felt lost its way, you know, in the days of Tom Fuentes and even after him, Scott Baugh, there certainly was a direction that was very clear. Um, the, the Republican chairman now, Whitaker, what's Fred, Whitaker. Fred, Fred Whitaker. Whitaker, I felt like he's not as strong um, a leader giving the party direction. And uh, and I think we saw that in the last election that you and I were covering for Feet to the Fire. So you think a strong leader would uh, make I a think difference a strong, right now? I, I do. I think a strong leader with direction. And I think they've become too out of touch. And they, they lose every election. They, they lose you know, every I mean, election. And I think a lot of that is, Rick, because of the candidates they're choosing to run. I mean... Harley Ruder walked into that congressional seat for Rohrbacher. Well, they didn't engage. The, they I think didn't the engage. biggest challenge that they faced is that for a long time in Orange County, mm -hmm. Orange County was a GOP town. And if you were a GOP member, you had kind of an easier time getting elected, oh, yeah. getting reelected. Yeah. When it came to be competitive races, I think that many of these candidates, they weren't prepared. And I think that their approach was... And again, it's worked in Orange County because there's, as you mentioned, there's no broadcast, there's no radio, the papers are weaker than they've ever been. Right. So it's, look, I'm not going to go to a debate. Right. I'm not going to engage. I'm just going to have a one-on-one -on -one okay. conversation with voters through mail. And obviously this, this last time in 18, it failed miserably. Failed for the miserably. GOP. I mean, I know that Noberto and I were talking about it in, in that last go around. We couldn't get anybody to actually be interviewed o even over the phone. They just figured they were going to send mail and they were counting on people just, you know, reading that stuff. And, and as a voter, I never read mail. I never. It goes right from my mailbox to trash because it's actually comical. I mean, if you're if you're looking for, you know, some fun that day. But, yeah. But, you know, we were talking about what the uh, uh, with these elections, you were talking about how wonderful it is. You get to vote for the people who, you know, you're closest to and everything. Do the campaign flyers, do the literature that people get in the mail represent this great spirit of democracy? See, it's, I don't it's, think so. It's, no, of course it doesn't. I don't think it's, so. uh, you would think that, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the uh -huh. Ruta Rohrbacher thing was just terrific. That was I mean, right. it was it was Vladimir Putin, Putin versus <laughs> Hillary Clinton. I mean, every every piece, you know, I mean, right. that's, you know, and, uh, you know, corruption and da 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 well, da. Well, I'll tell you and, the best and, piece of mail I've ever in that got. race, there was some truth to it. <laughs> but, but in most of them, they just trudge up these things. And, you know, somebody got a parking ticket years ago. And so they're, you right. know, threat of the you know the, the motorists or whatever and you know it right. just goes on and on and this because this is the way you win elections and i i'm just think saying i you think mail works that way well it obviously they do I, I think it works because it's done you know that's a good but people are paying it, money so it must work but i think it has created such a cynicism in the public yeah, now i'm not sure there it is works no, oh i well i mean I'll it works for the campaign right, consultants because they make a lot of money I, off all of right that. whatever but i i think that it certainly has created a cynicism in the electorate where uh, yeah, nobody has standing anymore the, in, in any the, i like it when the the classic piece of mail goes back to when Scott Ball was running against Rohrbacher in the primary. Do you remember? And and it was a series of postcards 
from around, like, oh, yeah. hello, oh, that's pretty creative. I'm yeah. from Paris, you know, hello from Paris, People this is get Daniel Revolver, with mail. I'm spending oh. your money in Paris. It, I thought that was very clever, and it got a lot of play because it had a comic twist to it. But the rest of it, it's it's just tabloid. I mean, it looks like it all came from the but National Enquirer. Coming Inquirer. from a guy who had supported Rohrbacher, you know, every time he, he ever ran, <laughs> you know, it just... Uh, so what do you think this time around? So these, these same races are up. The Republicans are, right? in a sense, we're up for rematches, 39th. You have Cisneros versus Young Kim. So that's actual rematch yeah. from last time around. Harley Ruta this time is up against uh, chairwoman of the Board of Supervisors, Michelle Steele. Now, right. I think that's a very interesting Or race. actually, there's a few other candidates in that right, race. Right, but I think that's those are yeah, the two biggest. Going, those money. are the two biggest, uh, yeah. Uh, Katie uh, Porter. Katie Porter's yeah. got sort of, that's an interesting one because she's got a host of Republicans running. Uh, yeah. Peggy Peggy Wang from uh, uh, uh your Belinda, right. uh, Lisa Sparks from uh, uh, Chapman, right. Right. Uh, uh, Don Sedgwick, Mayor yeah. of Laguna Hills, who I think has out fundraised yeah. a lot of the, right. the, the challengers. Um, what do you think on those races? You think we'll, well be surprised all, how, at all? How ironic. It always was in Orange County. You had the entrenched incumbent Republican and, you know, lots of Democrats running. And now you've got right. in that race uh, uh, the, the, the other way. I, I wish I could impart some some knowledge to you folks. I don't have a clue. And that's one of the reasons the elections, the local elections are fun because it, there's usually no polling or if there's any polling, it's not very good. Right. So election day really is the poll. That's when you find out. And I'm just, I, I'm kind of fascinated because I, I hear things that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's going to be another wipeout for the, for the Republicans, but others say no, you know, but, uh, uh my, my own my own feeling is that you know California to the United States now is the bizarro world. Yeah, I mean, pick whichever one you think is bizarro, but it it's just the mirror image, total opposite. And the way the country's moving is exactly opposite of what California is. And I think California is probably still going to drift more to the left. I do think the day of reckoning is coming. If you want to talk about that later, but I think that that's some time off, and that so I I, I would be. If I had a bet right now with the very limited knowledge I have, I think the Republicans will do, uh, they'll be lucky to hold what they have. I don't think there's going to be any, any great pickups for the sure. Republicans. Incumbency, incumbents are hard to take out. Uh, uh, you have a lot of power. I noticed that the Board of Supervisors here in the local races, they have an incredible ability to send out mailers, you know, at the last minute from the county. So it's like if you're a candidate running against an incumbent, you're already up against a couple hundred thousand dollars of mail paid for by the taxpayers. That's a hard, sometimes it's a hard, uh, uh, you know, hump to get over. Uh, in the first district, we have uh, incumbent supervisor, uh, 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 Andrew Doe, who's uh -huh. running up against uh, Westminster council member, uh, Sergio Contreras. He got the endorsement from the democratic party. Uh, we just had Ada Briseño on the, uh, uh, the podcast not too long ago. And she was mentioning about how uh -huh. he got the endorsement. Uh, uh, city of Santa Ana Mayor Miguel Polito is also in that race. He is a formidable uh, fundraiser. That's, I think, uh, I was talking to Sergio not too long ago, who was like stunned when he started seeing IEs dropping and dropping. He was looking at Miguel's main uh, bank account going and going like, well, I think I can compete with this. And then all of a sudden started getting hit with IEs from independent okay, so areas. so tell the people in the audience, explain what an IE is, because sure, that's sure. In kind of an insider baseball thing. And let's talk about IEs for a while because sure. they really do. They move now, the dollar. They move the dollar. Independent expenditures are when, let's say, I'm the Orange County Association of Deputy Sheriffs. And I like the current uh, uh, Board of Supervisors candidate, Andrew Doe. And so I can spend several hundred thousand dollars to send out mail on his behalf arguing for those candidates. Now, I mean, again, it's the First Amendment right to express yourself and say, I you know, like this candidate. But these days... When reporters, we used to look at people's campaign accounts and see, well, who's fundraising who. These days, you see these things are lighter than you would think. And then all of a sudden, when you go look at the IEs, as we call them, this is where you start to see what I think really begins to move the dial. Frankly, I think the big X factor in Orange County are the independent voters. Well, because, you know, it, if you go back to the history here, it, it, this, everybody was asking for campaign reform in their cities and everything. And people, you know, oh, well, they're buying, you know, they're buying races. So local jurisdictions started limiting what candidates, what you can donate to a candidate. So like in, in my neighborhood, you know, maybe you can donate $100 or $500 to a candidate. Well, that's not going to get them across the line as far as mail and everything else. So that's where it, in their best effort to try to, 
you know, keep it normalized, they created the IE as a way around that. Because now those those organizations, they can do, there's no limit to what they can do for a candidate. So this campaign reform on a local level actually turned around to shoot them in the foot. Thanks as always for joining us again and make sure to join us for the next podcast, hopefully after the elections. All right, thank you.